All right, man. Tell me, how are things going? Man, things have been going great. Just working, staying out of the way, trying to stay from the Rona. You know how it is. What about you? Yeah, things have been pretty going pretty good. You know, this podcast is is doing good. Uh, trying to prepare for when this uh, social distancing get, uh, gets over. You know, invest more time in it. And you know, some I'm, I'm excited about this this uh, upcoming summer, bro. What does ATF stand for? Against the family. Against it's, the. Uh, yeah, I just had to. I just like uh, creating this podcast. I just had to. You know, I put a list of names down, and it was a bunch of, like, names I didn't like. But, bro, when I came up with uh, Against the Family, that's, like, the most badass name I, I could uh, I've, I could think of. And, yeah. And, like, that – and Against the Family, it, the, what I love about that name, it, it gets me excited every time I, I, I start it. Who, who is the family? Um, basically, one, uh, a lot of things inspire me. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen The Godfather – but in The mm -hmm. Godfather, there's this scene where uh, Frito, uh, Don, uh, uh, Michael tells Frito, uh, who uh, betray almost like some sort of betrayed him in a negotiation, and he says, "Frito, you're my brother, and I love you, but I don't want you ever taking sides against the family again." And that and that scene like stuck in my craw for for the longest, because um, I also have a, a sense of feeling uh, of that in my family, because. You know, um, I'm Latino, and I don't, I don't, uh, I'm also, you know, I have parents from two different nationalities. My father's Mexican, my mom is from El Salvador, and I, I don't feel like I belong with either of them because, you know, the, the, the even though uh, I'm Latino, 100%, they're two different cultures. Uh, they're too distinct, and sometimes like, yes. I feel like uh, I don't belong because my cousins, they're 100% Salvadorian or they're 100% Mexican. And when I feel uh, uh, me and my sister, we're we're the mi we're mixed children. I even have half sisters who are 100 percent Mexican. So, uh, mm -hmm. so you know, I feel like that that's sort of distinction that that sticks to me. That's a dope name. I like it. Mm -hmm. ATF. Okay. And and tell tell me about your podcast. You have a podcast on too, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have the Salt Podcast. Um, we've been going doing it for about a little bit over a year now. Um, so we got probably about, I don't know, over 10 episodes. We had took a break because, you know, we all got new jobs and we're working. So it's, it's a little difficult. We've recorded a lot over the, uh, during social distancing, but, uh, man, it's amazing. It's a, uh, it's a podcast I have with some of my best friends and, uh, what we do is, uh, you know, we come from the Bible verse of uh, Matthew 5, 13, it talks about the, you're the salt of the world, um, in the Bible. And so, um, we we don't necessarily call it a Christian podcast. Uh, we are just Christian men who talk about things, um, everything. We talk about life, sports. Um, of course, we talk about faith, um, different things we're going through. Um, so, man, it's a it's, it's it's a blessing to be able to do it, and, and I enjoy it. It's great. Um, I'm gonna make sure, like, I get I get the people listening here to check it out. Uh, I I, yeah. I, I checked I checked out a couple episodes myself. It, it's actually pretty good, you know. I think I, yeah, I saw I saw your word of the uh, your word of the year uh, video recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man, we ha we we do this uh, one thing that that I do, um, and I encourage everybody to do it. People I mentor, or just, just anybody I talk to in conversation, um, to come up with a year. I mean, a word for the year. Um, so if you're a person of faith, you know, I always you know say pray on it. If you're not a person of faith. Um, you know, just meditate on it, think about it, you know, but, but what is it that, that you want? Um, what are you looking for in the year? What are you expecting from the year? Um, what, what, what's your, what direction are you going in? What is it? What's your focus? Um, I think that a lot of times people just kind of, uh, are unsuccessful in a lot of different things because they don't have a focus and they don't, they don't know where they're going. They just kind of off at sea, uh, with no sale, um, and no type of accountability. Um, but if you really, um, are determined to be successful and you have a, a, a mindset and a goal, it's always good to kind of have a singular focus. So um, to have some sort of word. Um, and so we all had a word last year, um, it was birth. Um, I have a word this year and it's called poor and it is poor. So P-O-U-R, so poor. Um, that's my word for the year. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah, I think um, I'm, 
I think even I commented my word of the year under the video. I think it was create for my mm-hmm. word of the year for 2020. And if I say if I had a word for 2019, I'd say it'd be it'd be search because uh, summer tw- I graduated summer uh, of 2019, uh, class of 2019, and. I had no dire- sense of direction of where I was going. So I, I, I um, uh, listening to, to you guys uh, really, uh, really helped me a lot. Uh, it really uh, helped me gain some perspective uh, uh, as to where I was. Because looking back, um, I, would, I would not want to go back to summer of 2019. That was, so, um, that was supposed to be the best summer of my life. It was the summer I, uh, I turned 18. I'm following an adult. I'm done with high school, and I get to do something with my friends before we go off to college. And mm-hmm. I, I wasn't able to because I was so, I was so lost and dumbfounded. Um, uh, and I was so scared. And I was really scared because I was going to college. And I'm a, fir- yeah. I'm a, I'm a first-generation American. I'm the first uh, of my family to ever go to college. And basically, for me, going to college, it was like uh, bl- getting blindfolded and running through the woods, hoping you come out on the other side. So that was that. That's what honestly it felt to me. I had no help, no sense of direction. I had no. My parents couldn't help me. Uh, I had cousins that uh, that that been to college, but they couldn't they couldn't help me because uh, they I, I can't ca- be calling them every day because they got they're busy with their with their schedule. But yeah. yeah. So yeah, that that really. I'm, I'm proud of you for that. And it's dope, you know, that you're doing that because, and I, I, I relate to you, um, not in the sense of being a first generation, first generation American, but as having to go first in things. Um, there's a lot of times, a lot of things in my life where my story is having to go first and, um, you don't have a blueprint for it. You don't have a map. Um, it's one of the things that you kind of got to learn and a lot of lessons come the hard way, trial and error. There's a lot of fear. Um, but one thing I would tell you is that if you're going first, you have the ability to go first. You know, you you made it this far and, and, and you're out there. Um, so fear is normal. A lot of people think fear, I mean, I, fear is good. A lot of people think fear is bad. Um, I don't believe that. I don't believe that fear is a bad thing. I believe fear is something that is, that I know that fear is, is something that is God-given. So uh, me being a person of faith, I quote the Bible, but it's, you know, it says that God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. Um, so I, I, th- this is how I look at it. Um, is that I'm driving, uh, like I have a car, I'm driving a car. Fear is in the car, but it's not in the driver's seat. So fear doesn't dictate my life. It doesn't make my turns. It doesn't put the gas pedal on. It doesn't put the brakes on. What it does is fear has the small seat in the back, in the back, it has the middle seat, the smallest seat. Um, and it has a place because fear is good. I mean, pe- people do stupid stuff all the time. Like I should be afraid if, I'm running and I see, and I'm running and there's a cliff. I should be afraid. I shouldn't have no boundaries of fear because then I'm not in touch with reality. Um, so I believe that fear is good. I should be afraid um, if I'm about to get a car accident. I should be afraid if whatever, whatever. you know, variable things happen, various things happen. But so there should be some fear, um, but fear is not going to control me. Um, so I, one thing is that you should use your fear to push you. You should, you should use your fear to motivate you. You should use your fear to differentiate you, um, but uh, never let it hinder you. Yeah, it is. It is not until like you're you're afraid of something that it really uh, it tests you. So my dad, my my father, um, uh, I have a my father is stubborn, but he's a smart man. He's a uh, my relationship with my father. We bump heads a lot, and he tries to preach. He tries to make me uh, tough, uh, tough to the point where. Uh, when I when I go out in the world in real life, it's uh, I'm fully prepared to, for it. So that's why, um, you know, I have a rocky relationship with my father. But hopefully, you know, everything he teaches me, uh, hopefully, uh, it, it benefits me as I know it will, because he's um, yeah. you know, uh, most I, I would say because he's an old he's older he's an older man. My father is sixty sixty one uh, sixty two. Uh, 62, and he would uh, say, like, well, he's out of touch with my generation, but he speaks through experience. But, yeah, you know, I know. Uh, I try to uh, learn as much as I can from him and try to be aware of it. But, yeah, when it come, when he, what he tries to uh, instill in me is that fear is only a mental state that um, you can either let it, you know, you can either let it control, it, it control you or you control it. 
And yes. that's, that's how we got to uh, live life every day. Absolutely. That's good. That's really good. Like, my father, like, he, like, he, he say, he always tells me, you think I'm not afraid? You think I'm not afraid every time, like, every time I hear you're doing bad in school and you think I, it's up and, and, and it's on me? Or you think I'm not afraid that I may be responsible for, for like, the bad things you do? You think I'm not afraid to, to be a, a father at, at this, this late in my life with my deteriorating health? And, and that, I took that to heart. And, you know, it's like, uh, you know, that's, that's the, uh, you can either let it make you or break you, basically. I would say like this, um, you got to be a duck. I mean, you got to be a duck. Um, you ever see ducks come out the water? I know, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It goes right off your back. Yep. So, um, looks yeah. relaxed, relax on top in the, under the surface of the water. He's paddling his feet like crazy. Well, well, not not only that, but if you ever see a duck get out of the pond, yeah. out of the pond, you never see a wet duck. You get out the pond and the water rolls right off. So you have to be that way with criticism, hard with, with hard words, harsh words. Um, yeah, things hurt, especially when they come from people that we care about. You know, but the thing is, is that um, just like in humble height we talked about, you have to be set on on your identity and who you are. Um, know what you provide, you know what I'm saying? And, and it is, it's okay. It's okay to feel emotions. It's okay to feel. I think that's one thing that um, the older generate, the older generation doesn't like. You don't show emotions. Everything that men need to be hardcore, stoic, whatever. But, you know, it's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel happy. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to cry. It's okay to, you know, all these different types of things. Like, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? It, that doesn't make you weak. It, it makes you strong that you're strong enough to show emotions. What I mean that you got to be a duck is that so when people say stuff, if your dad says something, um, that's not to say that because some of the stuff is, some of the stuff, a lot of stuff is probably really, really good. Um, and it may not be in a, um, you know, don't lose the message in the sight of the messenger. So there's some stuff that you can take from that. There's some things that, 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 that you can take. There's some stuff that you just let it roll off your back. Realize if you're going to see when, 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 if something that doesn't benefit you, something don't apply, let it be a ball. That's uh, that's really that's really great to know. That's why I wanted to have you on here. Um, I know you was gonna, I know you, I, I could turn to you every time I need help. Uh, you know, you're like that big brother figure to me. Uh, to me. Uh, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't have any, I don't have any brothers. I, all I have is uh, sisters. Um, I have five sisters and. Uh, whenever I could get a, a, a male figure that's not my father, that's close, uh, that I, that can relate to me, uh, I, I take that to heart, and I re I'm really appreciative. Or I'm appreciative of you. I'm appreciative of, of uh, Joseph Donato. I had him uh, for episode two. He was my first guest. Who supported from me from day one. I had like my my, uh, 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 my my friend Jordan. I had him on episode four, I think. I'm appreciative of all, all all the guys in my life who try to who try to see me the right way, and that's why I I, I, I love to use the word brother. I know the difference between a brother and a friend, and that's why that's yeah. why I see you, Eric. Well, man, I appreciate it. I see the same way. You know, you, you're my little brother, man. You're one of my uh, one of my favorite people in the world, bro. I told you that. Um, you got an amazing heart, uh, amazing ama amazing young man, being an amazing man, and uh, uh, that video last year that you submitted brought me to tears. So, man, just from it's funny because me, me and Dono uh, talk about you pretty regularly. You know, we talk about when we used to go up there and work out. Um, and it's funny because we were training for the league, but you was, you were usually the highlight of our day. Seeing somebody who who worked as hard as you did, um, was as passionate as you as you were, um, and uh, Man, you just have a uh, you have a drawn heart, man. So it's it was it was really good. Um, and so, man, I'm 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 grateful for you. I'm 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 blessed to I'm blessed to know you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, bro. Hey, look, I think we should uh, uh, tell the story of how how we came to be because um, the uh, we've uh, we met the first time we met. I remember was uh, the summer after my sophomore year. Probably the summer before, or the summer before that, uh, somewhere around that, 
you came to our strength and uh, and conditioning camp, and I and I saw and I saw you for the first time, uh, in, as a real person because, I, I and I've known you before that, and I think I should tell this story because I don't think I've ever told you this story. Um, uh, so for middle school, uh, I went, uh, I was sent to Ulrich. I was zoned to go to the Klein Intermediate, but my parents uh, got a letter in the mail say they they had the opportunity to send me to Ulrich, and I hated I hated it over there. Um, it was um, <laughs> I didn't really like it. I didn't really fit in. Um, uh, it was mostly a diversity issue uh, and whatnot. But I didn't like it. And what when I when I was in eighth grade. Uh, they were, my parents were trying to make, uh, decide whether to just send me to the school I was zoned to, Klein Forest, or send me to, uh, uh, Klein, Klein, uh, to Klein High, the school that, uh, people from Ulrich was going to go to. Um, but, and I really, what made me, uh, to, uh, stand up to my parents and tell me, uh, y'all not, y'all, y'all, can y'all please not send me to, to Klein High, was I saw, I, YouTube, because I was playing football and I wanted to know more about the football team at Klein Forest. I YouTube, I went on YouTube and went Klein Forest football, and there was a video of, of your homecoming game, uh, of you at your homecoming game, senior year, 2011. And it was, uh, you know, you uh, basically, it, it was the news, and you were on, and you were on there, and I saw your your highlights from that game, and I was like, damn, like I really want to go to KF now. I I, I, I really want to go to KF. You're, you, my, I told my friends, you're not sending me to Klein High. So that that's that's how I I, I can't uh, you inspire me to like uh, stand up to my parents and say, uh, Mom, Dad, I, I really want to go to K, uh, KF. Don't please don't send me to Klein High. I don't I don't I don't have a good relationship with the people I've I've met over the last three years at uh, at middle school. I really want to go. I uh, start a new at, at Klein Forest at the school I'm zoned to. Please. And so that's how I um, came came to Ulrich, and I thought. After I, w I went to uh, K I went to KF, uh, I was like, man, I'm not, I don't think I'm ever gonna see uh, th uh, this dude Matt Davis on because I, I, I to be honest here, that's not the only time I saw the video. I watched it over and over and over again, hopefully uh, trying to make it a, my dream game to have a big game under the varsity lights, homecoming. Uh, I made I made that my dream game, and when when I saw you for the first time, I was like, that's Matt Davis. That's the reason. I wanted to come here. That's the reason I, I, I'm, I'm here, and, and we and we met for the first time, and that was that was a really great experience. And to now we have the relationship that we have today, it's uh, really a, uh, it's really a, a, a I don't know how to, what, what to say a really a, you know mind-boggling experience to know that we that that how our paths cross and how we know each other to this day. Yeah. Wow. Um. I don't know what to say that, man. I'm, uh, as, a, as, a, as that, 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 that's good to know, man. I just, uh, I remember that game. So, yeah, man, I, me, I remember meeting you for the first time. Like I said, man, you just have a, um, you have, you have a drawn spirit, man. I remember, uh, I was working out and I think I actually started working out with y'all. Um, I don't remember. I know our, I know I was on a rack by myself. Y'all were next to me. Um, I remember asking about you, I introduced myself to you, because uh, you just work, man. You just work, and uh, you just uh, you're super resilient. When the when it, when 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 the chips are against you, uh, things aren't always going well. You the dude I, I want on my team. So, I, if I was a coach, if I had 11 zeros, I'd be good. I can go to war with that. That's that's great to know, man. That's great. To, uh, to know. Now, um, that's so. Uh, take like take us. Uh, I was gonna ask you if you could take us back to your uh, to your college days, playing for uh, playing for A and M, transferring around, and ending up at SMU. I was wondering, like, if you could uh, you know share share your story a bit with us. Yeah. Um, so, of course, I left at KF, went to Texas A and M. I was there for uh, almost two years. Graduated early. I went there, competed for the starting job, lost it to Johnny Manziel. Johnny won the Heisman. We went 11 and 2, had an amazing season. Um, grew close with my brothers, became a, a, like an off season captain working out next year. Um, battled for the backup job in the spring. Um, went into that all the way up until the uh, 
fall camp, battling for that. Um, ended up just not having a good relationship with my coaches and didn't seem like they were, you know, they had my best interest in mind. Um, so I left, I went JUCO with the TJC Tyler Junior College, I think, in East Texas. Um, I was there for nine months. Um, I only played half the season because I broke my foot. Played the, I played that, that whole time on a broken foot, didn't know it. Um, ended up leaving, going to SMU. Um, and at SMU, my first season, I, uh, I played in the first game, half of the game against Baylor. Next game, I hurt my shoulder, my throwing shoulder, so I didn't play for like two and a half weeks. Played a little bit here and there. I got my first start seven games into the, I mean, five, seven games of the season. Threw a touchdown my very first play. Um, and then ended up starting my rest of the time at SMU until my senior year when I tore my ACL, first game of the season. Um, but I broke, set some records there. Um, did well, man. Uh, it was a, it was a fun, fun thing, man. It was a, it was a fun thing. I had a lot of memories, but that, yeah, that's kind of my journey in a nutshell. How was the, um, how was your journey academic wise, trying to balance school and football? I'm the wrong person for that, Z. <laughs> Uh, um, I, um, I can only be honest, you know me, I'm, I always keep it real. So that's just going to be me. Um, I wasn't, um, I didn't care about school and that wasn't good. Uh, my mind, uh, part of the reason why I went through so much, um, like when we talked about the humble of a hype, when I, when I spoke there, part of the reason why I went through so much is because of, uh, where my priorities were and like everything to me, my life was football. That was it. I was, uh, it was league or bust for me, nothing else. I was going to the league since I've been five years old. Uh, I was on the path to go to the league. Uh, and God had other plans, injuries prevented me, but all in all, it's just God just wanted me to do something else. And, uh, but so I didn't, books wasn't, um, and it's not, I'm, I'm a smart dude. I mean, I mean I'm, you're, you're smart, but you can't prove it on paper. Oh, uh, I can prove it on paper. <laughs> I, I, I remember on paper. I had I had the second highest Wonderlic test out of all the quarterbacks in the draft when I when I went to the draft. Mm. Didn't like whatever in the twenty minutes, however long we do it. I had second high, second highest thing. But I just I didn't like I wasn't the type. Of, I didn't want. I didn't go to class. Like I didn't always do my work. Um, I did enough to pass. Like that that was what it was until I, until I ran into um, the right professors, which was like my junior year in college at SMU, um, and they were my sociology professor. And she, uh, she, she was tough on me. And she told me that, you know, that like uh, Dr. Shorten, I'll never forget her. I still have a relationship with her to this day. She loved on me, but she was so hard on me. And she made me come to class. She made me do my work. She made me do my presentations. And I fell in love with the actual um, degree. So it was nonprofits. But uh, what it was, is it was so sociology based, so studying people. Um, so, man, my, my later part, my latter part of college, the last about year and a half, um, I learned a lot. So I always tell people that I'm, a, I'm an example for athletes of how not to go about it in the beginning. Because, um, you know, like I said, it was, I didn't care about anything else at first. So, um, but it took me going through, getting, getting in some trouble, um, going through a lot of some different things um, to kind of get some revelation and some wisdom on that. Yeah, that's 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 really great to know, bro. Like I said, I talked about this with Miles, you know, uh, and we, we uh, like, uh, I think we have to wrap this up uh, real soon because, you know, I, I have you here on a short time, but I appreciate you uh, doing this. Uh, but yeah, I talked about, like, real quick, I talked about this with Miles, you know, it's all about, you know, having a love for some. If you don't have a love for it, then there's no point in doing it. Um, I don't have a love for, like, like I said, school isn't like I said, school isn't for everyone because not everybody is in love with the academics, and there are people who are in love with the academics, and those are who the people who go to who go to college and uh, and ha and study with a passion. But yeah, again, I appreciate you for doing this, man. Like two Klein Forest legends here conversing on against the family. Uh, anything you want to say before we wrap this up? Yeah, man, we got one legend, and we got, and then we just got, we just got Matt Matt Davis over here, man. You the legend. I'm flat. Yeah.
And the first, first, and uh, shoot, I don't know if anybody got this yet. But yeah, somebody did. The first Humble Over Hype recipient of the scholarship ever. You will go down in the history book, man. You will go down in the history books. And let me tell you something. Chelsea, the CEO of Humble Over Hype, is absolutely in love with you. She thinks you're the most amazing person in the world. She still talks about you. I'm sure she probably watches your video every once in a while and just cries. But man, it was a, you are super, super special for that, man, because, um, yeah, you're the first time ever. But I do want to tell you, man, um, before I get off, this, these will kind of be my, my closing statements, man. I'm just, uh, I want to say something to you. I'm just super proud of you. Um, and this ain't even for the camera. I can take this off camera, but I'll just say it here because some, I'm sure you're recording it. But man, I'm just super proud of you, bro, because I, uh, I remember uh, watching you and seeing, uh, you know, how closed in you are. Um, and really, um, you are, you just attacking your fears and anxieties and everything head on, uh, watching you grow. Uh, and there's no such thing, um, there's no such thing as a no to you. So your resilience, man, your perseverance is inspiring. Um, I know you said that I inspire you, man, but you, 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 you definitely inspire me with some stuff too. So, uh, uh, my little bro, man, I love you, but, uh, I'm super proud of you, man. Not but and, I'm super proud of you, so. Appreciate that, man. I love you too. All right, brother.